I'm Kevin. I'm Kevin Toyama. <laughs> I am uh, a JSA board member. Um, and, you know, when I heard about this, um, uh, this panel and I was asked to moderate it, um, two things kind of came to mind. One being, wow, they must not have anyone else they can get to do this. <laughs> and then two yes. was that, um, this is really interesting because, so I grew up in Sacramento, moved out to uh, the East Bay um, for college. So I don't have a lot of this um, kind of knowledge of the history of the senior centers um, that uh, serve so many uh, community members. And, you know, the reason why I wanted to do this more of a conversation is because just I'm personally fascinated by, you know, what, um, you know, what happened and why it happened and how the community came together to make it all happen. So with that, let me start uh, with a couple of introductions here. Um, so Pam Honda, uh, she is connected with Eden. And prior to becoming the JSA board president this year, um, Pam was involved with the uh, Eden Japanese Community Center since the early 90s in coaching the girls basketball team. And then when she retired in 2017, she started volunteering at the Eden Senior Center, helping serve lunches provided by the Alameda County Spectrum Lunch Program. And the lunch program provided um, you know, lunches for twice a month and it gave the seniors an opportunity to kind of get together um, and she, you know, Pam spearheaded the effort to extend uh, the JSA lunches to go out to, you know, the Eden seniors who had previously kind of been a little bit regionally distant. So it was hard to get the lunches delivered out there. Um, and she was kind of able to kind of rally volunteers um, within the organization to help make that happen. And of course, um, when the pandemic hit, uh, she was also key in organizing the volunteers to deliver meals to the seniors um, at home. Um, but as we all know, it's not just about, you know, the uh, food nourishing uh, our bodies, but we also need that nourishment uh, in spirit. And Pam was also uh, key in helping organize game day where every Friday the seniors meet and they play games like Shanghai Rummy uh, puzzles and you know, other games to maintain the social connections uh, and keep uh, the senior mind sharp. Um, just as some background, she grew up in Oakland and Berkeley and attended Sycamore way back when Sycamore was in Oakland and then again uh, as it moved to El Cerrito and uh, I, didn't know, I did not know this about Pam, but she is an avid hiker who has hiked Half Dome in Yosemite, which seems yeah. pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, Pam. <laughs> Thank you. Pam, I have a quick question for you. Um, so uh, you just did the uh, uh, a hike uh, in Zion, Utah, is that right? Yes. How, how was that? Landing. Angels Landing. It was, uh, well, that was my, that was on my bucket list. And it was, uh, you know, it's a place apparently that the, uh, I think it was the native Indians called Angels Landing because they said that only angels could land there. It's really not that high. It's not as high as Half Dome. It's only about, I think, 6,000, no, 5,000 feet high. But anyway, it is a way, I mean, it is, you know, a bunch of switchbacks and then, using some little chain helpers, you know, chain link to get you up to the top. But that was cool. But if you ever go to Zion, you got to do the narrows. Yeah. That is really the best. Mm -hmm. So that, that kind of surpassed uh, Angel's Landing. Um, not as uh, challenging as Half Dome was, but the narrows is a whole different experience. So mm -hmm. I would highly recommend it. Mm -hmm. If you, like exhausting. Climb on, <laughs> if you like to uh, rock climb or, you know, river <laughs> rock climb, it's a lot of fun. Well, welcome, Pam. Um, Jill Sakaguchi. So she moved up from Los Angeles uh, in 1972. As I was saying, um, moved up from the Los Angeles area in 72. Um, was an elementary school teacher before, but hadn't formally worked uh, with seniors before. 
um, but she became uh, Sakura Kai's first coordinator. Um, and she is the wife of a pastor. And you know, she had this experience um, that would kind of translate very easily because you know, as the wife of a pastor, she would um, be around the elderly members of the different churches uh, as she moved around. Uh, and particularly, you know, the Issei's uh, would help her in you know, this role as the pastor's uh, wife. And I'm guessing that um, it was kind of like, they were like wanting to be like these motherly figures for you, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, June served for over four years um, as the coordinator at Sakura Kai. And the, um, you know, when she was, you know, initially uh, there, you know, it was a challenge because the Japanese community around that El Cerrito Richmond area um, didn't have its own space. And so Sakura Kai had to move in four different locations uh, in those first few years. And you know, so June, uh, like I said, grew up in Orange County and uh, and this is kind of a, a very interesting factoid you gave us. So she participated in Disneyland's first Christmas parade <laughs> down Main Street as a drill team member with her high school band. Welcome, June. Um, I have a very important question for you. What is your favorite Disneyland ride from being there and going there all the time when you were growing up? <laughs> Well, I haven't been there lately, so I can't name all the new ones, you know, but we used to like all the D tick or E ticket rides. I don't even know if you know what those mean, you know, but we had tickets. And of course, those uh, E ticket rides were the, the grooviest, you know, but I guess it was Space Mountain. I would oh, have classic, classic. Welcome, June. <laughs> Thanks. Um, our next panelist. Uh, is Amy Shinsako, who I think everybody knows. I, I, you're one of the mo more connected people you know, that, I, that I've met here in the East Bay. Um, so when June returned to full-time teaching and moved on uh, from the formal role of coordinator at Sakura Kai, um, they were looking for a new coordinator. And because Sakura Kai was partially funded by the West Contra Costa Adult School, the new coordinator was required to have a teaching credential. And Amy's dad was interested in the position, but didn't have a teaching credential. But guess who did? <laughs> so Amy was, uh, became enlisted into helping as well. And her responsibilities included taking care of, you know, the paperwork required of the school district, helping with center activities and fundraising, um, and part of, I think, why so many people know Amy is because, you know, she's been involved in so many community groups. Um, she grew up with the Berkeley Buddhist Temple, was a founding member of Daruma no Gakko, uh, served on the JSA board, uh, and was a teacher at Harding Elementary School, where <laughs> Horioko Toyama, she was, uh, I believe my wife was in your first grade class. Is that, is that, am I? Third grade. Third grade, okay. Uh, um, and Amy is uh, an avid traveler, including uh, a cooking vacation to Italy. And Amy, I got a question for you. So what is a dish that you learned how to make during that cooking vacation that you make at home? Anything? Well, you know, tiramisu. <laughs> uh. mm -hmm. It's really easy and it's a, you know, it's, just so delicious. We, we look forward to you making um, tiramisu <laughs> at the next JSA crab feed for 300 people. Well, you know, I've done it for movie night. <laughs> oh. So welcome, Amy. And our uh, final panelist, um, Tetz Maniwa, uh, was part of the students in 1970 who wanted to start a program similar to the senior programs in San Francisco. And that all kind of started with a summer trip. Uh, and by the spring of 71, uh, they already had a framework for a longer term program and focused on a center in the Berkeley, Oakland, Alameda area uh, because of the density of the um, 
East A seniors uh, over there. And you know, the city of Berkeley opened its South Berkeley Senior Center to that group. Um, and Tetz's mother, Amy, was chosen to be the first director. And uh, Amy not only had, was bilingual, but she had been helping with the East Bay Japanese for Action events and had a connection uh, with, you know, she was part of the network uh, in the community. And Tetz, uh, as he was working with the Berkeley Nikkei Senior Center, um, helped with food prep, gathered materials for crafts, uh, you know, took pictures to archive, you know, what was going on, uh, drove seniors to the to and from the programs, um, and had, you know, been involved for over two decades through to the uh, mid 90s. Um, and Tetz also helped start the eating program by talking to the eating JACL and community center, um, the local churches about the needs of their parents, uh, and how a lot of the parents in the Eden area were actually coming out to the Berkeley area to uh, participate in these activities and, you know, uh, kind of help figure out like, oh, a local program would be worthwhile. Mm -hmm. And if that wasn't enough, he was also one, you know, one of the uh, people who helped organize Sakura Kai also. And, you know, again, that was this challenging, um, uh, region because there was no kind of local um, focal point for uh, it's a much more kind of um, the, the families were more spread out. Mm -hmm. um, Tetz grew up in Berkeley and attended West 10th Methodist Church in Oakland uh, and served on the boards of the East Bay Japanese for Action, Japanese American Services of the East Bay and East Bay Housing Incorporated. Uh, so so as you can tell I've asked uh, a few kind of uh, wacky questions for, um, in preparation for, you know, this, uh, presentation. And one of them, um, was, uh, you know, to, to tell me some of the, you know, your favorite things. And one of them from Tetz was, um, one of his favorite songs is in my life. Now, because of the era, I do need to ask, like, are you talking about the John Lennon or the is version? John Lennon. Actually, uh, the original. Okay. <laughs> I could see that uh, it had, you know, while it, the, the musical um, just beauty resonates today, um, I, I can imagine that at the time that it was released, it had like this very uh, strong emotional uh, impact on, on, on everyone. Mm -hmm. So welcome, Tets, and uh, and everybody here. Thank you so much for you know taking time out of you know your busy schedules to um, you know to to share some of these stories. And and you know where I'd like to start off is um, actually uh, a question for you, Tets. Is um, you know what you know for someone like me who you know wasn't around the Bay Area in the '70s. You know what was the Bay Area like? back in like the late 60s that made people like yourself and others think like, you know, um, a senior center to help the ESAs uh, is something that is really needed. Part of it came out of um, all the activities at Cal in the um, late 60s. Uh, I wasn't here then. Uh, I was in Vietnam. <laughs> Uh, when I came back, my brother and sister sort of insisted that I get involved with activities in the area. So I sort of didn't have a choice. <laughs> and, you know, what was, um, you know, for the, the Issei, um, you know, they're coming from a time where uh, you know, there must be a lot of mistrust with, you know, the government and uh, seeking aid, you know, for, for seniors. Um, you know, was that, did that play a role when, um, you know, you were kind of helping to, um, to get the center going? Yes and no. Um, one of the challenges we found was that 
the seniors didn't necessarily distrust the government. They just couldn't speak to anyone. Mm. You know, they mostly worked in Japanese and they couldn't find anyone to help them get through the bureaucracies. You know, we decided that they needed help more than they needed more programs. On the other hand, there were no programs all for them. So any programs that came up would, would be good. And we found that out in the first summer when we just took them on about once a month excursions to sort of Bay Area places to go see. And we found that there was a tremendous amount of joy when they all got together and just, you know, we'd go out, we'd make lunches for them, take them someplace, and they'd sit around and talk to each other. And they just seemed to really enjoy that. And we thought that's something that's probably extensible that we could go in and do this more often than just once a month. And that's what we started thinking about. How do we do this? Where do we do this? What do we do? What kind of things do we want to do? And basically make it so that the seniors had some place to go to socialize. Because a lot of them were starting to become isolated. They couldn't get around. Most of them did not drive. And then they had a the language barrier. So there was a lot of things going against them being able to go out and have fun. So putting together the program in some sense was just more to make sure they enjoyed themselves for a while. What were um, some of the, um, the places that you visited in those monthly ex excursions? I have no idea. I know we went <laughs> to um, Golden Gate Park once. We went to, no, I can't remember. It's too long ago. Didn't no, they just... like to go up to Reno? Reno. Or gambling? <laughs> uh, Reno was one of the ones that happened every so often. Um, uh -huh. We went to uh, an apple orchard. We went to the wine country, but you know, there were lots of things that we did over the years and the summer programs were sort of supplements to the senior centers because they would only be going on once a month and the centers were trying to go on every couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, um, I always admired the people from EBJA. You know, I was a student at Cal before you and had, would not ever, was not considering, you know, the isolation of the Issei. And, um, and, and for students to take on that project was amazing, still is amazing to me, that they would think beyond their social life and trying to pass their classes. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, I think that like the um the Japanese language services, like even what like JSA offers now, I mean it's it's hard for me to imagine um what it must have been like to try and just navigate around um, you know, before Google Translate and all of this. Mm -hmm. That uh, you know, if you want to go to um you know, even like a museum or, or anything like that, they're just like, you know, th it takes a lot to try and like figure it out and and um, uh, communicate with with anyone in like a formal setting like that to, to do anything. And then, uh, you know, to be able to do that with, you know, uh, as a group um, is, it, it is just kind of reconnecting um, after that kind of isolation that you were talking about. And June, for your, like for Sakura Kai, when you started there, what were some of the challenges that, um, that you're hoping that the senior center could, um, you know, could help with? Well, there were a lot of senior centers around. El, El Cerrito had a really nice vibrant senior center and so did Richmond. Uh, and in fact, Richmond built a brand new facility and uh, it was very state of the art kind of, um, you know, structure and uh, um, a nice, um, had wonderful programs, but not, no, none of the Japanese went to any of them. Uh, the, you know, they, they felt, 
I don't know, but first of all, they didn't understand it. So they wouldn't go even if they were invited, uh, even if there were meals served there or whatever, they just didn't go. They didn't feel comfortable. And I think that was the one main thing that we wanted to try to try to get was a, a feeling of being comfortable with each other and, uh, uh, you know, having a meal together and talking to each other in the same language. And then also getting information that these seniors in the other senior centers were getting a lot of information about social security and all these other important, mm -hmm. I felt, very uh, uh, needed programs for our ESAs too, that they were not getting all the information that they could. And that seemed to be so, um, well, not right. So that, um, I, I would think that those were the major things that we hope to get uh, as we assembled our ESAs in the centers was information for them, yeah. And how did you, um, you know, maybe Amy, you can talk about this, uh, like in those early years, how did you get people to, um, you know, to, to join and become involved um, with the senior center in this? You know, Jane, uh, June, you know, just, she, she had, we had a great start, you know, my dad and I, because by the time my dad became coordinator, you had a home at the drop-in center. Um, you had a core group of maybe 30 or 40 seniors coming. Mm -hmm. um, transportation was pretty much organized, I think. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then Sakura Kai has always had a really great board. Mm -hmm. so, um, so June laid the groundwork. It was the volunteers. I mean, we had just a cadre of wonderful, I mean, I mean, we're not talking about one or two. We're mm -hmm. talking about dozens. Yeah, and, and I'm not exaggerating there. Um, and if it wasn't for them, it, the program couldn't have run, I know for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I mean, they did everything, you know, the, the food prep, they did, they had had the tea ready, they had the chairs set up, the table set up. I mean, and then we had to cart everything into, I don't know, we had to have storage because we didn't have Zabotones. Mm -hmm. We had Zabotones and we didn't know where to put them all, you know, and, and, uh, so the, the, the volunteers just um, packed it all. And, you know, I really don't know where they put it. I don't, <laughs> I don't know where they put all that stuff, but it, it got there every time we met. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> it's just a miracle. I mean, they were wonderful. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then the members were all Issei. Mm -hmm. And so um, the volunteers were all Nisei and pretty much bilingual too. Right, they were totally bilingual, unlike mm -hmm. me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and me. I'm trying to be. I'm trying. I'm trying. Yeah. Well, I I heard that also that um, uh, there's a funny story about uh, uh, involving reach this outreach to the community as well. Um, and Jill, do you have that video clip that? Uh, we can show. Cue that up. So actually, um, Amy, can you uh, uh, maybe introduce the person who's going to be in this in this oh. video clip? Okay. Well, um, Ben Takeshita is somebody that um, was there at the very beginning for Sakura Kai. Um, somebody that Tets, I guess, contacted to get some help from the, from the community. And, um, and Ben was there at the beginning and he's still on our board today. <laughs> and we are celebrating, well, we've just celebrated our 48th anniversary. So we have Ben Takeshita and Grace Goto, who have been on our board for 48 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, well, this is Ben. Um, big, big time for all of us. But I would just want to say that, that Dennis had, and Grace had asked me to um, 
start a senior center in Contra Costa County. And I had no idea what that meant because they had just finished making it in uh, Berkeley. So there was no Japanese list or anything, but the telephone book uh, in those days had the Japanese name and the address and the phone numbers. So my wife and I would look through all the, the our telephone book, find out the Japanese names. There were no lists available at that time. And we would then call them and we were trying to uh, concentrate on getting the Issei, the first generation, uh, our parents actually, um, and get them started. So then after we got the list, we, I started to call them, each one, speak to them in Japanese when necessary, and try to get them interested in forming a senior center. And we got about 30 people initially, and we opened up a uh, storefront on San Pablo Avenue and started there. And then we also went to Sycamore Church and got June, uh, Joan was it? June, June Sakaguchi and her husband was uh, the Reverend of uh, Sycamore Church. And so uh, got June to help us be the first coordinator of the Sakurakai. And we started in the storefront in, um, in um, San Pablo. And that's the way we started. But it wasn't something that came all at once. You have to look for and contact people and do it. But it was a pleasure. And these Bob and Dennis and Leiko really worked. I remember them all because uh, they worked very hard to keep this thing going. And I appreciate that I was part of that. Thank you for a good show. And you. And Ben was um, president of JSEB, or I guess it was JSEB, huh? For several years. Mm. But he and um, Fumi actually cold called people from a telephone book <laughs> to tell them about Sakura Kai. That's incredible to be able to, uh, one, that's an awesome idea. I mean, how else are we going to do it? But also <laughs> to uh, put forth that kind of effort to um, mm -hmm. you know, just find people who could benefit from, you know, from the centers. That's amazing. Yeah. So, so Kevin, at the, um, it, on the Eden side, I think one of the things that um, helped tremendously was, you know, we had a, a community center already. Right. So that, um, you know, brought together not only Issei, right. but a lot of the Nisei and the families, right. um, the farming and, uh, you know, that industry got together. And um, from way back in 1931, I think is when the first uh, mm. uh, community center was built. Um, but then, you know, years, years later, um, I think with the help of um, EBJA and whatnot, um, the Eden Issei Terrace was built. And mm -hmm. so that was housing for many of the Issei uh, who, you know, who were either widowed and, you know, family had moved on or whatever. And so that was a place for them. So that became like a, um, what do I want to say? So the, the community center said, hey, you know, we've got all these Issei's and, you know, they need to uh, exercise their minds and their bodies and they need to socialize. And so uh, the idea uh, was sprouted by members of the community center. However, it then was um, just coincidence that people like Tom Okamoto and Ted's and uh, Dennis Yatsuya and uh, Grace came and talked to, you know, the community center folks and said, hey, you know, we need a place where we can provide some programming for the Issei. And so it was really a, a great um, timing in terms of uh, their effort and the community centers. Um, and so, you know, people like, I think the very first coordinator for the uh, Eden Senior Center was um, Masako uh, Minami. Yeah. And uh, her daughter is on online, by the way, Janet is here. 
Um, and people like uh, uh, the Sakai's, Mrs. Sakai, Kazuo Sakai, and uh, Mrs. Hirabayashi were names that I got in speaking to folks around here. Um, they were the ones really who spearheaded the program. And uh, Mei Katayama, who is still with us, and uh, she was actually one of the volunteers. And she said that the big, the big, uh, I mean, the big problem they were solving was how to get people from point A to point B. Like uh, you guys have said, this Issei's many of the women didn't know how to drive. So, you know, they, they needed rides to the center. Um, and so a lot of the Niseis were able to provide that as well as help with uh, taking them on the field trips and doing uh, crafts and, and whatnot. So. Well, you know, that's one question. Oh, go ahead, Tets. One of the biggest challenges we had is a lot of the people agreed it was a good idea. But then a, those same people also said, you kids are going way too fast. You can't do things that way. Mm. So one of the things we did was said, okay, watch, we'll do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And when so, you say that um, you can't do it that way, is it because there was this uh, sense of like, there is a proper way to do it? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> and, and that, you know, was one of the biggest challenges was they had the facility, they had all these people in the area. They sort of already had a community uh, mindset. Of yeah. This is, you know, all of us working together. And they all agree this was a good idea. But they also said, you guys can't do things that way because that's not the way we do things around here. Mm -hmm. So that was a, the biggest challenge was getting people to come on our side. Now, once we convinced a couple of people uh, to agree, who agreed with us that it was an idea that made sense, um, it was a lot easier because when you get a champion on uh, who used to be an opponent, it's a really valuable thing to uh, show to the community that, you know, oh, by the way, someone who really didn't like the idea of us starting this program is now saying we should do it. You know, and that was, was, there, was there a concern by the um, different churches and temples and uh, other community groups about, well, these senior centers, how will you know, could it have like this kind of ripple effect on our own organizations that like, oh, they're going to be maybe going there instead of here. And did they at first maybe see some kind of um, uh, not quite competition, but, you know, it just kind of changes the way that, um, you know, the, the routines that a lot of the seniors would be. Yeah. I don't think they actually inherently were aware that that was a possibility. Um, most of the organizations agreed with us that the seniors, the Issei, needed more activities and more functions and places to go. Um, just they didn't like the idea of some kids coming in and, you know, six months after coming up with the idea, saying, oh, by the way, we're going to start running a program in your place. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I think you know, that was the major challenge with the Eden and Eden folks because they already had a center and we didn't have that, you know, we so we didn't have to go through that kind of, uh, you know, um, a challenge. Um, yours would have been a challenge, though, and and thinking about churches, thinking that churches would not want them. I don't think so, because their purposes were so different, you know, um, social services. Uh, for the elderly is not something that you always heard at church. You know, mm. it's not that that wasn't the main purpose. So, I, well, I you, in addition, the uh, senior programs were mostly on Saturdays, except for Eden, which was on Thursday, uh, and the churches were on Sunday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, June, um, for you also um, as the first coordinator. Uh, for your center, there must have been a lot of firsts that there was no exact roadmap. And so you just kind of had to figure it out uh, on the fly. What, can you, are there any things that kind of come to mind as far as like, oh yeah, I had never done this before. And I guess I just have to do it. Yeah. Well, 
that's why I was telling Tets earlier that, you know, we went to visit the Berkeley Senior Center because that was the closest place. And, you know, I, I would talk with Amy, his mother, and she, who was a director and, you know, try to find out how they were running, you know, and what we could do that was similar or different or, or you know, adding new things. And, and um, uh, we, you know, we liked their birthday celebrations. We incorporated that, but we also tried to get community people who enjoyed singing and, and had leaders in, in Shagin or any of those kind of singing groups. And then, you know, we had ceramicists in the local area who came to, you know, teach our, our, our um, elders, um, you know, ceramics. And, and we tried different things, you know, and, and on different uh, Saturdays and, and some stayed, some, some became regular, some others were just once in a while. But, you know, we, um, that's the way we, it was trial and error. And we never had, we didn't even have a name, you know, we didn't know what to call ourselves. So we even had a name contest or whatever. And, and, and the East States presented names and, and, and uh, we picked the one we liked and Sakura Kai came out to be the, <laughs> you know, the, the name. I don't know what we called ourselves, <laughs> but we didn't have a name. So we had to do that first too. So, yeah. We didn't call ourselves El Cerrito, Richmond, Senior Center. You know, it was kind of long. So, um, yeah, those were some challenges. So by the time my dad started as coordinator, you know, um, there was a pretty set program. You had mm -hmm. Leslie Toki teaching ceramics mm -hmm. and Nellie Sakai teaching crafts mm -hmm. and I don't remember who taught Shigin, you yeah, know. It was and then an elder, had, Mr. Ono, yeah. Uh-huh, mm -hmm. and Minyos, mm -hmm. somebody brought their shamisen and they were singing, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. as I said, you know, we really appreciated what you did, you started. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm gonna see if I can share my screen now. I have a couple of pictures I wanted to share. Um, let's see here. So if anyone has uh, any, uh, any reactions to some of these photos, if they, they recognize anyone. Hmm. And so this was, um, sorry, uh, this is uh, Masako Minami and Shizue Hirobayashi. Hmm. And here we have uh, one of the um, young Tets. <laughs> <laughs> Someone looks kind of familiar there. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, wow. Per perhaps uh, uh, looks like there's a, a watermelon <laughs> being split here. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and particularly, uh, there's someone enjoying the watermelon. Uh, uh, do you recognize that young man there? Is that Tets again? It, no. That was. No? <laughs> no? So it must have been one of your field trips, huh? One of your I think so, outings. Yes. yes, that was one of the outings. <laughs> the outings were lots of fun. Mm-hmm. That, yeah. How many um? How many people would come out to uh to these outings? You would take bus loads, wouldn't you? Or bus loads. Um, it was uh, about a hundred Issei. Wow. And, wow, that's amazing. Your forty yeah. Sansei and Nisei as helpers. Mm -hmm. uh, when we first started the first year, we everyone drove, and we didn't try to get the buses. The second year, we decided. We couldn't get that many cars. Yeah. And then after that, we just kept getting buses. It was easier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how did um, you know, you enlist, you know, was it like a, just a lot of um, you know, the the core group, the initial group, and they would kind of get their friends to come help, and those people would kind of uh say, like, hey, this is really great, you should come out too. Like, how how did that you gain that momentum of um of people coming to, you know, uh, help with at the centers. 
Oh, helping at the centers was, um, at some times, in some cases, it was easy. People would bring their parents and we'd say, oh, since you're here, why don't you help? Mm -hmm. um, uh, others we talked to uh, what eventually became um, Ebja. No, oh, uh, sorry. Um, Jason, and talk to all the organizations. I mean, we spent a lot of time going to almost every single organization and saying things like, we've got these things started. Do you know anyone who can help? So it was a lot of background uh, work, just talking to the organization, let the organizations find the people, and then just let them know when things are going to happen. And, you know, for, um, what about for, uh, you know, for Eden and Sakurakai as well? Um, did it happen similarly with, um, you know, volunteers and everything? Uh, Eden was different because they already had a fairly large core of people who were doing things in and around the community center. Mm. So they just basically hit up on their own people and said, you know, oh, by the way, if you've got time, this, this program's starting. And apparently a lot of the Nisei in the area had time. So they came in and out. Uh, Sakurakai was a much bigger challenge because as Ben noted, we didn't know anyone there. Mm -hmm. It was so spread out. It was just too hard to figure out how to do this. And mm -hmm. again, we talked to the organizations and said, can you help? You know, help us find people to to do these kinds of jobs. And I'm not sure how, but somehow um, all the organizations came together and said, here's people. We had two churches who were kind of vital with sending volunteers and that was Sycamore. And then there was the East Bay Free Methodist Church too, that uh, we were connected also with, the, with them. And they, the, a lot of volunteers came from them and um, the younger, younger Japanese speaking people really wanted to help the Issei's. So that was real helpful. Yeah. And then just community people like Kimi, Kimi Honda, she just appeared at Sakurakai one, one Saturday and she just was a miracle <laughs> worker and just had all these ideas and wanted to do this and that. And just, you know, we had our wonderful health, health, uh, health uh, screening thing that she spearheaded. And, uh, you know, she would be here if she was here today. <laughs> she would be on screen and be, have a big part because mm -hmm. she was so key. Uh, what a volunteer. I mean, you couldn't ask for anyone more than her, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we loved her and miss her. I had the pleasure of uh, working uh, with her on the uh, JSA calendar committee, oh, you know, yeah. uh, a project that I understand she was the, yeah. kind of originated out of her. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I never thought that would take off at all. I said, who wants another calendar, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and look at well, it now. <laughs> well, June started the crab feed along with Grace. They were the <laughs> original <laughs> yeah. Yeah. people behind that. Yeah, I love crab. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, we've heard a little bit about the um, the primary uh, needs that uh, the centers are trying to meet, but can someone talk a little bit about um, what some kind of surprise needs uh, came out from the centers and like, oh, you know, this is, uh, the seniors are really enjoying this aspect um, of it and benefiting from this that, you know, we, we didn't quite uh initially think would be you know uh, a big need but now clearly like this is important to them because of this re these reasons i mean and that can be whether it's like actual services or it could be just kind of like these social connections that come out of it actually you know what's what's really interesting um so so you know i am part of the kind of the new 
new or more recent history of Eden. Um, and one of the things that uh, has come out, I believe, is the outreach to people who, um, well, for example, we have a couple of women, who, so one in particular, who uh, was from Japan. Um, she married a um, European gentleman. And when they uh, moved to the United States, they um, uh, planted their roots in, I think it was Monterey. And so she, Japanese speaking, um, you know, was really only um, introduced in the United States to mostly Caucasian people. And she said she never really had any Japanese friends or, or anything like that. Well, her husband passed. Well, I guess they moved to Castro Valley and, and her husband passed. And, you know, it just, um, Janet, I'm gonna get this wrong. But anyway, she met up with Janet at some office, doctor's office or something, and they started talking. And next thing you know, you know, she's, she, she's a regular now at our senior meetings. And, you know, every single time I see her, she is so grateful for being able to kind of get back to her Japanese roots. You know, she said the Japanese food, the Japanese language, she could speak to some of our members. And she just said, it's just, I mean, she just loves it. And it's such an eye-opening experience for her because she didn't really know about Japanese Americans. She only knew that she was from Japan and, you know, and now she lived in Monterey and really had no Japanese friends. Um, and so, you know, she, it, it's just been really, uh, uh, you know, she's gone full circle and she's just so appreciative. Yeah. And so there is that need and mm -hmm. there still is of people right. who have been isolated and, you know, you get back to your Japanese roots and it just brings back lots of memories and yeah. right. nice thoughts. Well, I think we all realize that the Issei's are gone. The original people for whom this program started, <laughs> were, they're not no longer here, but it's, it's the newer Japanese speaking people who are now here that need help too, you know, maybe, Maybe they're a little bit more savvy in, in the in, in you know in the system um, uh, here, but but there's other needs that they have, emotional and social and psychological needs that they need too. That I think the centers provide. Mm -hmm. And um, you know we have Shin Iseis mm -hmm. at our center, and then we also have Niseis and Sanseis. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I think they just enjoy being able to interact with people with similar experiences. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they're out in the world for the, re you know, most of the rest of their week. But, you know, there's a comfort in gathering and um, sharing common yeah. experiences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, and, and one thing that surprised me was how much so many of our seniors like to entertain people, you know, our, our, the class, well, you know, even in the beginning, you know, it was Shigin and Minyo, you know, they would love to perform. Mm -hmm. And now we've got line dancing and hula and ukulele and taiko yeah. and, um, and, you know, we've had a couple of recitals and um, people who, people would be in various classes and we had to schedule them in such a way that they would be able to perform with all the groups that they were involved in. It was, you know, poor Marge had to, um, it was really hard for her to schedule what act happened when, <laughs> but, um, but they love to perform. And, and, you know, back when June was um, coordinator, um, did Mrs. Maoki used to do her um, little yes, skits her, back then? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Uh-huh, yeah. And they probably, and, and this is probably the only place where they could do right. things like they that. Feel, <laughs> they feel free to do that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
No, I do want to share a couple of more pictures um, that I have here. So let me uh, do this. Uh, here we have um, yeah. Masako uh, Minami and uh, Tetsu's mother, Amy. Uh, mm -hmm. Sure, and let me see who else is in here. Um, who? Hmm. And that's me in the middle. That's what I was thinking. Jim. <laughs> that is yeah. that's a young June in there. Yeah, with long uh, hair and glasses. Uh, and there is, let me see, whoops. Okay, actually, I want to do two more. Uh, there's also oh, there's June, June again. in the middle. Right, me. And Mr. Honda. Yeah, Mr. Honda and uh, Mrs. Adachi. Though. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that Mrs. is Mrs. Adachi. Yeah. Um, it looks like a there's a cake cutting going on. Yeah, is it that? was. I think it was our first year. Or I don't know. It was one of the anniversaries. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Oh, one more. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Uh, well, we can skip that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. So, okay, we we talked a little bit about um, some of these. You know, there's not as many you know uh, essays uh, today. Mm -hmm. um, there are still some uh, Japanese immigrants coming to the East Bay, of mm -hmm. course. Um, no, and so I'm curious about what you guys think are some of the um, issues that the seniors today that are um, in the East Bay are, are kind of facing that, you know, are they still some of the same ones or are there kind of different ones now, um, you know, uh, 50 years later? I, I think we just are doing mostly so, you know, just, just giving them a chance to socialize. But, um, you know, with this COVID, we made sure that everybody knew how to get a vaccination. And, um, and you know, I think, I, I, I don't think that they have, the need that they had in the past about accessing the social services, you know, that that they couldn't access before, and um, and if people are having issues, then you know, JSA has their great case managers that um, are are more able to help. Yeah, I think you you bring up the good point that um, you know, I mean the we we're currently we're constantly evolving, and certainly um, you know the Isseis uh, or the uh, Nisei and Sanseis today have access to much more information, and and because we speak English, we're able to get that information. We're uh, still pretty mobile and and you know drive and whatnot, but. But there, um, I mean, I think there's still the place for these centers because, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it just brings, I, I mean, I think there's a niche, right? There, there's some people who feel very comfortable going out and receiving and researching all the different information that they need. But there's always a group, I think, or there are individuals <laughs> who need a little bit more or who like the, maybe the smaller, more, um, you know, uh, intimate kind of relationships. And uh, so I think that's what, at least, you know, in the Eden Center, it, it brings together a group of people who, um, you know, number one, enjoy each other's company, but, you know, we're, we're serving, we're continuing to serve nutritional needs and, uh, you know, mind body kind of needs. 
Um, the pandemic was something that, you know, we realized, okay, now we even have to think outside the box and figure out how else to provide our service versus having them come to us. What do we do to continue to reach out to them so that, uh, you know, they aren't left uh, isolated and, you know, that can get very depressing. Um, and so um, it was kind of a really neat, I mean, it was a frustrating and sometimes hard technically, but um, I think, you know, with the technology, we were able to do Zoom and get, get folks and their uh, children or their grandchildren to help them set up Zoom and figure out how to do that and uh, continue to provide the exercise classes and the, uh, you know, talks and bingo and things like that to keep them active. Um, so it might not, I mean, it might look different, but I think the core values and the mission of what uh, the groups, what EBJA and everybody else, you know, all the way to JSA, the senior centers have, um, you know, their mission uh, is still very valid today. Mm -hmm. Amy, Tex, do you have anything to, to add as far as like the, um, you know, some of the, uh, you know, uh, some of the needs of, of today's seniors? Really hard to say because uh, haven't been associated with any seniors for about 20 years. No, I am one. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I don't see, uh, especially like the Sansei, um, going out of their way to go to a lot of these kinds of things because they're still too busy doing other things. Um, that being said, I'm sure there's some who would love to have the time to go to these centers and, and do things with other people. But uh, overall, I think most of us are still fairly independent and fairly capable of navigating through whatever things we need to go through. We have Sanseis coming to our center. And, um, you know, they're taking the ukulele classes and the taiko classes. So we're offering things of interest to them as well. well that is kind of a, um you're touching on something really interesting as far as, you know, as we look ahead, you know, how do all these organizations and, and JSA included, how do we um, engage the young people to become a part of this and to, you know, help power us through for the next 50 years? And, um, you know, you know what, what, what I, I'm curious about your guys' thoughts about, you know, what we collectively can do to, um, you know, tap this, you know, this great, uh, these great resources that oftentimes I think there's people, you know, interested in helping, but maybe they're just unaware these centers exist, their organizations exist. I mean, I even see at JSA that, you know, from like the ripple effect of bringing, you know, one, person like uh, Chef Yuji into the fold. And then he brings all his friends in to help. And it's just like that first connection um, starts to really have like a, you know, gaining momentum uh, to make a really big impact. So one of the things we've done at the Eden Center, because we, we, do, uh, we do see that as, as a challenge, getting the young people involved, but you know, um, so we used to have a Eden youth group and uh, they used to do their own activities, but they would also um, engage with the, the seniors in some of the fundraising efforts and, and whatnot. Um, and so we've, we've reenacted, we've reestablished that. And uh, um, already, you know, it's, it's great to see that um, when we bring the young people together with the uh, older people, whether they're, you know, us sanseis who are now, like you said, touch the seniors, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, the, that, that multi-generational interaction is, is just really so powerful. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's really important because we'll continue to be able to share all these stories, um, you know, and share what life was like way back when, 
um, and not lose that history. Um, and, and so, you know, we're, we're trying very hard to, um, you know, encourage young people uh, right now, high school age people to come and come to the center as part of, you know, bringing them for, for their activities, but, you know, fundraising, service oriented activities. Um, I, I, it really um, is good for them, but I think it's also good for the older people. And uh, I don't know, it's a good mixture, I think. And, and that's how we, you know, engage them and hopefully get them interested in continuing on the legacy of our centers. One thing that helps is getting parents of kids. So, <laughs> you know, the generation behind us, uh, you know, your yeah. grandchildren, I guess, um, to be aware that it's very rewarding to be a volunteer. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's something you have to have grown up with or it doesn't stick. Mm -hmm. Because if you've never been a volunteer, never um, experienced the, the value and joy of being a volunteer, mm -hmm. then it's never something of value to you and never important. But if you introduce the kids to these things early, then they retain a sense of something when they go and do volunteering work in the, their lives later. Even if they skip for you know, 10 or 15 years, they'll come back because they remember it felt good. Mm, yeah. When I was growing up in Sacramento, um, I went to the Sacramento Japanese United Methodist Church out there and was very involved um, in our youth group. And we would do a lot of service projects and um, community things just within the church itself. And so after I moved out here and, uh, you know, became involved in JSA, it was just like a very natural transition of like, oh, sure, I have, you know, this time and I can help. And uh, th that that feeling of like, oh, this is not some outside uh, organization that I'm just kind of chipping in on, but like, this is part of my community. Um, and, uh, you know, this is, um, you know, these are the, you know, parents of, you know, or grandparents of my friends and people I know. And, you know, I always feel like my parents live in Sacramento still and, you know, like my mom goes to a lot of these, um, the senior events out there. And there's a whole, you know, group out there that organizes events and great things uh, to keep her engaged. And uh, I, it makes, you know, make me, makes me want to do my part for other people's moms and dads out here in the East Bay. Um, you know, uh, so, you know, I can kind of chip in as well. Um, Jill, I do want to hit uh, some of, I see that we have some questions in the chat, um, and I, I do want to make sure we have some time to um, uh, for some of the audience members to ask our, our great panelists some of these questions. Um, when Katz was talking about the large field trips, it almost made it sound like they were, you know, it, you combined a, a field trip among the three different senior centers. So I was just wondering about that. Were they large group field trips or were the field trips, you know, more one, one center at a time? Uh, first, you have to understand the first two years, we just had field trips during the summer. Um, so we just put together these gigantic events where we take a hundred and something people someplace and have a party. Um, after the centers got started, we'd try to coordinate as much as possible to get all three centers and all the other people who weren't associated with centered centers to go out and have fun. So yes, they were sort of connected um, only through the fact that we tried to make sure we coordinated and let the centers know early enough so they could go around and put it on their schedules. So, sounds like fun. <laughs> it's a lot of hard work. In fact, yeah. uh, like when Sakurakai was starting, well, we 
we didn't take trips. So we relied on EBJA to, for our field trips. So I remember going to Angel Island, uh, you know, we, we would, you know, they took care of all the logistics. We just got our people together to meet at a certain place and we would go on the trips with them because that's, we could not do it on our own. We took it with them. So it was great to have these trips. Mm -hmm. So they organized it and they had the buses and they had yeah. lunches right? and they took care of all the logistics. Mm -hmm. And there would be like two or three buses mm -hmm. that would um, bus full, yeah. right. full of people. Yeah. And it was a chance not only for them to go someplace, but to go someplace with people they knew mm -hmm. and people that, you know, they, they would see the Sakurakai people at Sakurakai, but then they could see the Eden people mm -hmm. and the Berkeley people. Yeah. So um, yeah. it served a lot of <laughs> needs Great that things, way. Yeah. It's kind of fun, um, warm memory about um because i came from japan i married into the chinese american families 300 of them feel like it <laughs> <laughs> but it's i feel so alone mm -hmm. that, that time is i didn't find um san lorenzo uh, japanese church so that time is i feel so alone in the japanese-ness is missing but it's I found the Himawari Kai. It, I guess Sango is here in the audience. Mm -hmm. So um, I was so busy going to school, but it's I took a one year off after second babies. So I took a baby and the Himawari Kai had the once a month uh, luncheon. So I didn't have a, that much um, activity after that, but it, now I'm a retire. And now I'm uh, with JC movie nights. <laughs> I'm now uh, enjoying uh, Japanese ness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I'm not. I I didn't have an opportunity to be Japanese. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's it, it, it's very very uh, how to say. It's how to say it's very hard to be young mom. As um, Pam mentioned, that uh, um, lady discovered Japanese ness after she moved to Castro Valley. Yeah. So something like that, discovering who you are, where you are, and I'm so fortunate enough. Uh, I'm still young <laughs> enough to feel I can enjoy the uh, Japanese ness. So I really appreciate it to be in this. Um, group today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think, uh, at least for the Berkeley Center, we had a lot of seniors who were very active in helping keep the thing going because I think it was almost every year we had to go back to the city council to get funding. Mm -hmm. We right. basically stacked the meeting with as many seniors as we can round up and take mm -hmm. them to the meeting uh, just to show the city what kind of people we're talking about and, you know, how many, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, so activity sometimes just sitting in a city council meeting and, you know, making a couple comments and not necessarily having to go out and uh, putting your body on the line out on the street. Mm -hmm. Or anyone who still has some questions they'd like to ask our panelists, please do uh, just drop into the chat with a with question, and Jill will um, uh, uh, point you out to to uh, have you ask your question. But I have one. Getting back to uh, this relationship with both the younger people who were working um, at the center, and then the 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 seniors who were served. Were there any seniors who come to mind who like these were the people who you guys were supposed to be serving, but they insisted on actually working because, you know, <laughs> that that was just kind of in their nature to 
you know, cue help. And so it's like, oh, no, you know, Mr. or Mrs., you know, please sit down and let me bring you the food. And oh, like, no, yeah. no, I insist on helping to cook and all that. Are there, were there people like that at your centers? Oh, yeah, all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, my mom used to help with the lunches at mm -hmm. Sakura Kai. And I know every once in a while, she and her other volunteers would laugh and they, they'd say, you know, we're older. <laughs> These people were serving. <laughs> they, it was something they loved to do. <laughs> so you couldn't keep them down. Yeah. Uh huh. And you know, who else would you want to cook for you other than Mom and Mrs. Takeshita? <laughs> <laughs> the name that comes to mind for me um, is Mrs. Jean Nomura. Oh my gosh, she um, is in her nineties by now. And uh, up until about a year ago, she was she was not willing to sit down and be served. Mm -hmm. She would constantly be in the kitchen saying, "Pam, what can, what can I do? What you know?" And she'd pick up a dish towel or she'd pick up a tray and be delivering it. I mean, she just was uh, the energizer bunny. And uh, I mean. For so many years, she and her husband, I understand, um, you know, were just involved with the Eden Community Center and, and then as they aged the seniors, but um, just amazing examples of, of volunteers and uh, their heart and soul was, you know, in everything they did. Mm -hmm. um, to this day, now we have current people too, and uh, I think he might be on actually is Digger Sasaki, if I could do a shout out. Because he is Digger Sasaki is another example. He's like he's in his 90s. And it was only probably two years ago that we had to tell him no more climbing those ladders. Oh, <laughs> we'll get somebody else to put the signs up for the bazaar and the lights up for the bazaar because it's just so much in their nature, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, it just is such an amazing uh, attribute, mm -hmm. you know, but a uh, little bit of stubbornness in there too, you know? <laughs> <laughs> One other comment I, I just wanted to make was, um, I was uh, kind of emailing with um, Tom Okamoto who has been uh, spearheading um, and, uh, a photo archive project um, to, you know, of, of a lot of the photos of this era. And that's just like, it's so invaluable um, for, you know, to preserve these uh, moments and these these memories. And, and we're really uh, looking forward to sharing this with the community. Um, but he had mentioned how in looking at a lot of these old photos, uh, it was really touching to see how, you um, you know, just so many of these, the seniors were, you know, smiling and just uh, mm -hmm. the joy that having the sense of um, the community and being able to kind of uh, do these activities uh, together, um, it, it, it meant a lot. And, um, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, f f the community, I think, uh, just, you know, appreciates all the work that you guys did um, and continue to do with uh, with our community groups. I just um, feel so grateful that I worked with this generation of people who are always, always in gratitude for any little thing. I mean, they are just a grateful people, you know, and uh, it just uh, gives me, uh, you know, want to emulate them. I mean, they're always so thankful. There's nothing you can, you can say about that. They're just thankful people. 